My name is Megan Lim, and I am an ex-victim of UC Berkeley. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video is sponsored by my bank account. So it's the summer before your freshman year of college and you're sitting on an acceptance to your dream college, UC Berkeley, for your dream major, bioengineering, and you're on top of the world. And besides staying up until 4 a.m., doing random stuff, re-watching Harry Potter, and reminiscing on your high school glory days. You're probably wondering, what steps can I take to better myself and prepare myself to make the most out of my college experience? Well, do not fear, because Megan is here. <laughs> Unlike the 99% of the videos that I make that no one asks for, this video will be the second in my series of Q&A. I got a few emails asking about what steps I recommend people should take before they enter their freshman year of college. So I thought I would try to answer these questions and share what I think that would have bettered myself if I had known or understood a little bit better before I started at Berkeley studying bioengineering. So step one that all students planning on studying bioengineering in college should take in order to better and prepare themselves for the journey they're about to embark onto is subscribing to this YouTube channel because there are some good content coming. After all, the main reason that I went to college was so that I could talk about it on my YouTube channel that didn't exist yet. But in all seriousness, I really hope to share with you all the things that I picked up over the years and really talk about things and share things with you that maybe people don't talk about but should and hope to tell it to you in an entertaining and very Megan way. YouTube has also become my go-to outlet for comedic relief, so Thank you for being here with me. So my first legit step of advice that you should take for incoming college freshmen studying bioengineering is getting really good at math fundamentals. And by math fundamentals, I mean linear algebra and differential equations, as well as multivariable calculus. You'll find that if you built a strong set of math fundamentals, you'll be able to pick up more advanced, more elaborate concepts in your future and upper division classes a lot easier. Linear algebra is pretty much the basis of everything, pun intended. I mean, quantum mechanics is pretty much linear algebra. One time I was taking this machine learning for chemistry class and the professor kept talking about this concept called the Hessian or Hessian, I forget how you pronounce it. And she kept mentioning the Hessian like every day, five times in lecture for six weeks. And then all of a sudden one day, one student volunteers as tribute, raises his hand and goes, wait, professor, what exactly is the Hessian again? And the Hessian is pretty much this fundamental concept that we all should have recalled from our freshman year introductory level linear algebra class. I still remember when I took linear algebra my freshman year at Cal, we went into our last lecture and as a sort of grand finale, our professors spent like an hour trying to prove that the internet was basically a linear algebra. He kept saying that everything is a linear combination of something. Basically, linear algebra is really important and you'll see it come up a lot in your classes. Now, differential equations, also a big monster. A big, big monster. These form the basis of a lot of biological problems. For example, have you ever thought about how blood flows throughout the human body? Well, the way that blood flows through blood vessels can be modeled with differential equations. Just look up Navier-Stokes and a bunch of stuff will come up. And of course, I'm sure you're about to ask, but what about differential equations in quantum mechanics? Well, the Schrodinger's equation, pretty much like the Chipotle of quantum mechanics, did I just say Chipotle? Is a linear partial order differential equation. How are we gonna represent our system in a mathematical way? Well, a lot of the times it'll come down to differential equations. Multivariable calculus is also pretty important and you'll see a lot of the concepts resurface in your upper division classes, such as 
gradients or the Jacobian. I think the most important takeaway is just the recognition that math will inevitably become the foundation of your future academic work. I also got a question that when you're studying BME, is math necessary? They said that they studied physics and all the sciences, but they didn't take enough math classes in their high school and they're a little bit worried that they won't be equipped or prepared to study bioengineering in college. Now, I would say you definitely do need math in order to study bioengineering. I think the biology part of bioengineering can sometimes be a little bit misleading because you don't really need to know biology in order to do bioengineering. Biology forms more of the context of the problem that you're trying to solve, but what you need in order to actually solve that problem and what tools you need is math and some computational perspective. So during quarantine, I was forced to cut my own hair because it was getting way too long. Can you tell? I think you can. <laughs> I put my hair up, so you can't tell that I cut my own hair. <laughs> okay, third step, learn how to code. Pick any programming language and just practice using it. It could be anything. I mean, Python will probably be the easiest, but pick Python and then just try to build something with Python. I mean, I don't even have to say it, but this is becoming an increasingly technology-driven world and coding will probably inevitably become a part of your future scientific work. The only way you're gonna scale up your small chemical or biological problem to something even bigger is by finding some way to automate your solution. And more often than not, it'll be through code. A way you could start is by picking some sort of problem you wanna solve and then thinking of some way to execute your solution in code. The key here is to not learn Python and then practice coding. The key here is to practice coding while trying to learn Python. Don't just read about the syntax of Python and then never execute it. The only way you're going to really understand the implementation of Python within your problem is just by diving into solving the problem with Python. For example, start with maybe finding the eigenvalues of a matrix or row reducing a matrix. You could definitely just import a library, but it's a lot cooler and you'll feel a lot more stronger at Python if you could just code from scratch solving the eigenvalues of a matrix. Just please don't go and visit your local library and rent out coding for dummies or Python for dummies and then sit down and read it cover to cover without ever opening up your terminal. Sometimes I can't believe or comprehend how underrated problem solving is. I mean, knowledge is so easily obtainable with the internet or YouTube or books. You can easily accumulate mass amounts of knowledge, but something that will take time and years to hone is problem solving. And the best way you could practice problem solving is by coding because you can get a real time feedback on whether or not your solution is correct or not. Like practicing coding a solution to reversing a linked list, like submit your code, uh, check your linked list. Is it reversed? Oh hell no! If it's not, try again. Someone, wake me up when this pandemic is over. Okay, fourth tip, start practicing reading published scientific papers. Just pick any scientific topic you're interested in. Computational chemistry, quantum mechanics, riboswitches. Are avocados tasty or not? When will coronavirus be over? Find a paper and just try to start reading and understanding it. Maybe even print the paper out. Sit down in a quiet room with a cup of coffee, maybe fills. Make mojito, sweet and creamy, light ice, medium size, in a large cup. And just try understanding the abstract. Reading scientific papers is a great way to learn about all the different types of research that are ongoing throughout the world. And not only the types of research, but the methodology behind this research. How did they conduct this research? What base cases did they cover when they were studying this certain scientific problem? The sooner you get accustomed with practicing scientific thought, scientific methodology, and understanding these scientific papers, the better equipped you'll be before entering study of a scientific major. And I also wanna emphasize that it's really okay if you struggle at first on understanding what the paper is even saying or what that paper is trying to solve, because more often than not, you're probably not the only one. Hell, I mean, 
the writers of the actual paper may not even understand what they wrote. What would be extra credit and something you definitely don't need to do, but would be really great if you did, would be to create some sort of running tab on all the papers that you've read. Like create a Google Doc or Excel spreadsheet that lists the abstract title of the paper, the authors, and then just one sentence that summarizes what that paper was trying to solve. Imagine if you started that now before your freshman year of college and continue this little by little over the four years that you studied in college, how many papers would you have read over the course of four years? And how much smarter would you have gotten if you did that? I mean, you can also go back to papers that you read when you were a freshman, compare notes to when you read that paper when you were a senior in college, and compare how much you understood that paper more than when you were a freshman. That would be really cool, actually. Man, I wish I did that. Do you ever rewatch Glee performances just to check that you have feelings? All right. Fifth step. I just realized I've been calling them steps. I mean, it's not like we're baking a cake or anything. Fifth tip. Start looking into the kinds of research that professors at your university or other universities are doing. I can make an entirely separate video on how to get research, but I just want to emphasize exposing yourself to all different types of research that are going on. It's important to distinguish right away what types of research you're interested in or types that you're not interested in. Are you a wet lab kind of person or do you not like wet stuff and you wanna do dry research? You don't know until you try it. And chances are you're probably not gonna love the first research opportunity you get. So it'd be great if over the years you try out different research opportunities so that you can narrow down what research you would potentially like to pursue in the future if you do decide to go to grad school or do research in an industry setting. Okay, sixth and final thing that I got asked about on how to prepare yourself before college is how do you develop yourself professionally? And this is a really good question because I think it's something that you don't really learn in school, actually. So the first professional thing that I can think of would probably be your resume. Now, your resume is probably lacking in one major thing, and that's called experience, simply because you just haven't had the time yet. I mean, all the activities that you've done in high school, unfortunately, probably won't be very relevant or attractive to employers. But that's okay, because we've all been there, and you'll be able to fill in the gaps in your resume over the years. So that's something that you can easily fix if you just work hard. For the time being, what you can do is just list on your resume relevant coursework that you're taking, personal projects that you yourself are pursuing, or any skills that you've picked up. So for example, coding in Python or editing YouTube videos. And here's something else that you can do to be proactive in building yourself professionally and something that I wish somebody had told me to do before I entered college, and that's start researching potential interview questions and brainstorming potential answers to these questions. And you can find a lot of these questions by just Googling online or searching through Glassdoor. Find a company that you may want to work at in the future or internet in the future and just search it and browse it on Glassdoor. Interviewing is a skill and something that you won't be directly taught in your classes. So starting now and brainstorming potential answers to these questions wouldn't be such a bad idea. Now, I know I already made a comedic skit on making fun of the internship interview questions, but I can also make a serious video on how to actually go about answering these questions. You can tell me in the comments section below if you would like a video on that. Now, here's my last tip on building yourself professionally. And I think this is actually one of the more important tips that I've given. I mean, of course, everything I say is important, but this tip is to build some sort of portfolio of all of your work. And the easiest way you can go about doing this is building a personal website that just has links to all of your works that you've done. Maybe it's a link to your coding projects. Maybe it's a link to your GitHub. Maybe it's a link to your YouTube channel. Maybe it's a link to your writings. It's a link to your research. It's a link to your ideas. But what's important about this is that you're creating a personal brand for yourself. It's a way to give life 
animation and creativity to more than what just your resume says. If you link your personal website to your resume, the recruiter will click that link to your website just out of curiosity. And of course, it's not a making video without a little philosophy. I just want to end on the note that it's great to practice all of these technical things and professional things like building your resume, getting stronger at the math fundamentals, coding, reading research papers, but I also think it's really important to sit down and just build the right mindset for yourself. You're about to embark on a journey for the next four years, hopefully in person, coronavirus permit, and you're definitely gonna have to adjust, be flexible, and adapt to new information that you're gonna be faced with. You may even have to ditch some of the old habits that you're so used to, like maybe worrying so much about getting straight A's. It's good to go with the flow, but always take the time to sit down and think deliberately about the things that you're doing that are part of this flow. Be conscious of the decisions that you're making and be knowledgeable that each of the actions you take should be going towards building a better you. Anyways, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Support my dream to become a YouTube star and I will see you very soon. Stay safe! Finally, I was able to do that without falling.